Until now, when we started designing power cycles, and more specifically steam power cycles, our focus was mainly on two things. First, how much power we can develop, net power. And the second thing was to maximize the efficiency of our cycle. But now when we look at this Rankin cycle in more details, we can also see that we have some drawbacks. For example, due to the second law of thermodynamics, we have to reject heat. But this heat is lost for us. For example, in a standard Rankine cycle, where the pressure in the condenser is around 10 kilopascals, the saturation temperature will be around 45 degrees C. So this means that we are rejecting heat constantly at a temperature of 45 degrees C. And this is lost, okay? Typically, you'll be rejecting this to the atmosphere, okay? Or you'll be rejecting this, let's say, in a lake or in a sea. But the question we have to ask ourselves now is that can we use this heat out, Q out, at 45 degrees C? Obviously, we can. So if you are provided with a reservoir of temperature at 45 degrees C, what can you do with this? You can easily take a shower at 45 degrees C. Or you can use this to heat up a building. Or, for example, you can use the same way they did it in the UK to heat up a swimming pool using a crematorium. So the idea here, and this is the crucial point today, is how to maximize the use of the heat we are generating from this power cycle. This is easy because this, is, this heat is completely lost for us. But we can look at this cycle also in a different way. We know that some industries, for example, paper industry, food industry, and some components of oil industry, need energy at a lower pressure and a lower temperature compared to the conditions we are having in this Rankin cycle. So now the game is to try to combine them, okay? We will be using part of the heat from our Rankin cycle and use it for another purpose. So, what we'll be using here, we'll be using a new component that we'll be calling process heater. You can imagine this as any client needing energy at low temperature, much lower temperature than the one in the turbine, and lower pressure, okay? And what we will do, we'll try to steal some steam from the turbine and direct it towards the process heater. Now, after this, what we have to do, we have to go back to the main cycle. Now the process, the pressure, sorry, in the process heater might be or might not be at the same pressure of the boiler, right? Typically, it will be a lower pressure. So what do we need? At the exit, we need to increase the pressure by adding an additional pump. So now in this cycle, we are not only generating work net, but also we are generating heat, okay, through the process heater. The other thing we can do is to say, you know what, maybe the, the, the needs in terms of power production, W net, are not in phase with the needs for heat, okay, 
So basically they will be out of phase. So maybe we can manage to change the cycle in such a way that sometimes will provide more energy to the process heater and sometimes when needed we will provide more energy to the turbine to create electricity okay work and then electricity to do this to give us this flexibility we will use here a valve so we'll bypass this towards the process heater so now you can see it that when the valve is closed most of the steam will go through the turbine generating power and the part here will go to the process heater I can even close this so therefore we go back to a simple Rankine cycle and if we don't need to generate power or less power I can open this valve and therefore I will redirect the energy out of the boiler towards the process heater mostly now what we have to do is that we have to put the right numbers here so this one will be state one this will be state two this one we combine them will be state three here this is the main energy line at the exit of the boiler will be state four here after the valve we have state five remember that the process through a valve is as an isentalpic so h4 is equal to h5 here this is the same line four here we have state six towards the condenser we have state seven and here at the exit of the process heater we have state eight what does it mean here? This means that using the same cycle, we generated work and heat in the process heater. Okay? So we generated at the same time two types of energy. Okay? One work, another one heat. And this is why Today, we will be covering cogeneration, okay? So, generating two types of energy. We also can call this combined heat and power generation or CHP the next thing to do is to watch a video explaining what is CHP more in details looking at traditional electricity generation plants it's surprising how much energy is wasted you might say it's alarming the U.S. Department of Energy says a typical coal-fired plant averages 34% efficiency. That means one-third of the fuel it consumes is converted into electricity. The other 66% is lost as waste heat and often dumped into a river, bay, or vented into the sky. That's a lot of wasted energy. The waste heat from U.S. power generation exceeds the total national energy use in all but three of 216 countries. This is a big problem and a huge opportunity. District energy systems capture and reuse waste heat, distributing it through underground piping to provide energy services to buildings in cities, campuses, or communities. Also known as combined heat and power, or CHP, that recovered heat provides space heating, hot water, and process energy for buildings in cities, communities, and campuses, as well as industry, healthcare, airports, and military bases. It can even provide air conditioning. It's hard to justify wasting that much thermal energy when we're trying to limit greenhouse gases, manage budgets, and create sustainable energy systems. Instead of using only 34% of the energy, district energy with CHP routinely achieves efficiencies of 70 to 85%. That's why district energy is gaining ground. 
think District Energy is right for your city? Contact us at districtenergy.org to learn more. Let us analyze now this cogeneration cycle from a thermodynamic point of view. So, what do we have? We can easily calculate Q dot N. This is in a boiler. It's equal to what? It's equal to M dot 3. This is the flow rate here. Cross H4 minus H3. So M dot 3. H4 minus H3. Q dot out in the condenser is equal to what? Is equal to M dot 7 here. Cross H1 minus H7, okay? To make them all positive, I will be just writing M.7 cross H7 minus H1. The next one is the process heater here. So Q dot P. This is for the process heater. what we are providing to our client is equal to what? Here we have two inlets, one exit, so we can write M.5, the first inlet, cross the enthalpy H5, that is equal to H4, remember there is a valve here, plus the second inlet is state six, M.6 H6 minus the exit M.8 H8. The last one will be the power net produced, or here is just the power of the turbine. Remember that we always neglect the work of the pump compared to the work of the turbine, although I just have to subtract them. So here what do we have? We have an inlet here corresponding to M.4 cross H4. M.4 cross H4 minus H6, right? Why? Because this mass flow rate is only producing work from 4 to 6. H4 minus H6. Now we, ex we are extracting an M.6. So what is the remaining? It's M.7. Okay. M.7 is equal to M.4 minus M.6. So plus M.7 cross the rest will be H6 minus H7. Okay, so now we have to also define the performance of this cycle, okay? What's the efficiency of this cycle? It's equal to the power net, what we are producing, over Qn in the boiler, okay? Now we have to be careful, because if we write it this way, we're completely wrong. Why? Because the purpose of a cogeneration cycle is not to produce power only. It's also to provide heat to the process heater, to your client. So this is something also we are generating, okay? This is a benefit, but we are still paying the same price for this to be done which is Qn. So here I have to add Q dot P, this guy here. So this will be the definition. Now you can easily notice that this definition is not the same definition as for uh, thermal efficiency. So to avoid confusion we won't call it thermal efficiency we will call it epsilon u okay 
And this is what we call utilization factor. What does it mean? How much QN was used for something useful? Here we can claim that QN was used to generate power and also to generate heat to the process heater, okay? So for example, if we have an utilization factor of 90%, this means that 90% of our QN was used for something useful, okay? Which is interesting, right? Because when you think about the thermal efficiency, let's say 35% thermal efficiency, here you are just saying that 35% of my QN was used for something useful, which is work only, but all the rest is lost, okay? Typically lost here. Here, by using cogeneration, we are optimizing the usage of energy.